This is the Blood Red Podcast from the Liverpool Echo. Hello and welcome to the Blood Red Podcast where we just have one question on our minds today. It's the transfer saga really that is lingering over this summer, if one could be said to be doing such. And it is Philip Coutinho and his Barcelona future, which does appear to be in doubt. Uh, his name's been splashed on a lot of sports pages, a lot of websites over the last few weeks. Where will he end up? Could a possible return to Liverpool be on the cards? Um, and tapping into this interest, we ran a poll on the Echoes Live blog yesterday. And I have to say the response was quite overwhelming. So far, there have been around 50,000 people who've taken it, uh, which clearly shows the significant strength of feeling regarding Coutinho and his future. And the response surprised me, really, in, in terms of the outcome, because we'll often get a bit of kickback on our social media when it comes to Philippe. Um, we do a fair few stories on him and a lot of people say the club's moved on, you should forget about him, which obviously is understandable to a certain extent. But in this poll, 68% of respondents so far said yes, bring him home. 21% have said no way, he made his bed, wouldn't want him back. And 11% said they don't care, which again is entirely fair enough. Um, his agent has been busy in the media in recent days uh, and at the very least appears to be laying the ground for Coutinho, his client to leave Barca. And he seemingly is increasingly mentioning Liverpool every time he does appear on telly or in the media. So I think it's legitimate that we have this discussion. Uh, and with me, Sean Bradbury in the room, uh, Dan Kay, Conor Dunn and Paul Gorst. And we'll start by just going round one word or I'll have a one sentence answer. Would you have him back at Liverpool? Uh, Dan Kay? It's a no from me. It's a no from Dan Conor Dunn. Without a shadow of a doubt, yes. And Paul Gorst? Yes, Asterix. Oh, <laughs> oh well, a tantalising Asterix from Gorstley there, which we'll explore. Well... I want to start, we'll, we'll, we'll try and do this in, in chunks of Coutinho and, and his time at Liverpool, what's happened since and various aspects of, of what is a fascinating thing in terms of what will happen to him. So we'll start with the play we saw at Liverpool, how good was he? And I have to say for me, I'm, I'm very much in the Conor Dunn camp as well. I think the form he produced under Rodgers and the clock was, was excellent. He grew and grew as a player, his goal return increased every season. And by the time he left in that in that half season, for me, he was almost at kind of Eden Hazard level. I think it was 12 goals and 20 games in all competitions. He was he was very, very good. Um, he remains, in my eyes, an elite talent and very unlucky not to have a trophy to show for what he did at Anfield. So let's go around the room, just assessing, first of all, his time with the Reds. Uh, we'll start with you, Dan. What was, what was your take on Coutinho in a red shirt? I think Philippe Coutinho was a very good player for Liverpool. A very, very good player for Liverpool. I'm not convinced he was a great player for Liverpool. <clears throat> um, I th- I think you know he, he has to go down as an excellent acquisition. Eight and a half million pounds, I think it was, from Inter Milan in the January two thousand and thirteen. Came in the same summer as Daniel Sturridge, which you know I think those two for the price that we paid for both of them. Certainly, in the modern era has to go down as one of the best windows Liverpool yeah. have ever had. <clears throat> Excuse me, his first goal against Swansea. Gradually, he kind of fitted into things that first half season, finding his feet, and then. His first full season, 13-14, as Suarez and Sturridge and Brendan Rodgers' team really started to hit their straps, he started to have a really big influence on in that season. And um, we all remember the the goal he scored against Manchester City in the April of 2014 that looked like it might be one of the goals that was going to take us to the title. The problem I had with him is that I, I had, did have reservations about his, uh, his, his effectiveness to the team when he was still a Liverpool player. And even if, at the time he left, the way it was all kind of played out through the media wasn't exactly what you want to see, I wasn't devastated to see him go because I did kind of feel we've had better players before, we've had better players. And there's one game that always sticks out in my mind. That I'm not going to say he never turned up at the big games because cause he did clearly on a number of occasions. That City goal he mentioned, I think that little chip at Old Trafford in the Europa oh, League, the away goal that knocked United out, has got to go down to the, the best Liverpool goals, best Liverpool moments of the decade. But the game that does stick in my mind very much, so it was later on that same season, the final against Sevilla and Basel. And I do remember, at some point during the game, I actually turned to a, a pal and going, is Coutinho even playing in this game? Because I could not remember him having a touch of the ball. Um, so, it, clearly, the lad, is, the lad is a very talented footballer. But I don't feel he pulled up so many trees during his time at Liverpool that we should be in a position where we, we should be bending over backwards and possibly putting ourselves into financial contortions to bring him back to the club when, as we'll probably touch on later, the club and the team and the squad has evolved. Mm. Conor Dunn, do you concur? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> For me, he absolutely lit up Anfield. There were so many magic moments. I remember watching him scoring free against Arsenal, a scream against Southampton. And... Uh, you know, as soon as you arrive, well, he took a little bit of periods, as Dan said, to, to bed in. But I, I really thought he grew as such an incredible player. And 
I think Liverpool, if well, they obviously have the opportunity, clearly, of Coutinho's agent signing, but it's always going to come down to money. Um, and I don't think they should put themselves in any financial difficulty to sign him, because I, I think that'd be silly considering the team they are. But I think when Coutinho was at Liverpool, I think Liverpool relied on him quite a lot to produce a little bit of magic and give the ball to Coutinho. He's always going to do something magical with it. But now Liverpool have a string of other players who can produce something magical and I just think he will be such an asset in the team. We know that he can play in the Premier League. We have seen what he can do to Premier League teams. We've seen what he can create for Liverpool. And I just think, yeah, he would be such a good option for Klopp to have. Ghostly, let's start exploring that asterisk. Kind yeah. It's kind of say the um, word, but... It's an interesting one because I think for five years you, you watched him grow from, as Dan says, a young player you could tell immediately our talent. Just the way... He, just his poise and his balance straight away on the ball you can tell this lad's got something but he wasn't as good as perhaps some imagined when he he initially came and he just developed and grew and and improved and you know by by the by the time he left he was Liverpool's main man wasn't he and that's a main man with Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah and Roberto Firmino when he was captain in the team as you mentioned there he was up to 12 goals in in 20 games he was getting hat tricks in the Champions League with the captain's armband and mm. He really was blossoming into a, a truly world class talent and then off he pops to Barcelona for hundred and forty odd million, which I still think is Liverpool's best ever deal in terms of selling a player. I think eighteen months on it's a remarkable number, isn't it? And it's it's such a number that you think how would Barcelona even go about selling them because they're not gonna get anywhere near that fee. But other teams are not gonna pay even close to that because of the disappointing eighteen months he's had. So where his value lies at this stage is anyone's guess and I think that's where the asterisks would come in for me because it's how much the Liverpool have to, to operate with in the transfer market. Um, would they lay it all on, on Coutinho who's not necessarily going to walk back into that team? I think the team now is completely different to how it was set up when he was there. It was often if they were struggling or needed to pull something out of their bag it was basically just give it to him and see what he could yeah. do. Nowadays they've, they've been forced to find fresh ways um, using Salah more, Mane more, Firmino, um, and the midfield's a completely different makeup as well. Now it's a, it's a very very working like midfield. Um, might sound a bit harsh and the likes of Jordan Henderson and Genie Wine Alden, but they're not as creatively gifted as Coutinho. But they work a, a lot more, uh, do a lot more running and chasing, and it, they've operated or leave the space for the likes of um, Robertson and Trent Alexander Arnold. Even now the um, the big creative outlets for Liverpool. So I think. That's where my asterisks would come into play, but in terms of as an ability, as a player, I think the way he left um, wouldn't leave too much of a sour taste for me to uh, to welcome him back. Well, let's pick up on that. We'll go around the same way, start with you, Dan. The manner of his departure, <coughs> uh, January 2018. We've, we've all thrown a sickie, haven't we? There's his little backache. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it didn't go down well with the supporters, it's never going to. I suppose as well, it has to be borne in mind that the Coutinho episode, you know, his exit strategy, came on the back of Suarez going to Barcelona a couple of years before, um, Sterling leaving Liverpool for what he saw as a better option at Manchester City. Mm. And at the time, I think, you know, so this is what, January 2018, I think there was still a kind of a mentality amongst Liverpool supporters that, you know, we should not be seeing our best talents being cherry-picked by so-called bigger clubs. The fact that Liverpool have really gone on to bigger and better things in the 18 months since then, with two runs, to a, two Champions League finals, 1-1, one, one, and obviously a 97-point Premier League campaign, while Coutinho's career, by contrast, has kind of hit the skids. You know, you, one might argue that you know, there's a certain element of, of poetic justice there. Now, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not so daft that I can... I'd cut my nose off to spite my face. You know, I, I think you can make a strong argument to say Liverpool have still not really replaced Coutinho. Last summer, there was obviously, as we all know, the abortive deal to bring in Nabil Fakir from Lyon, uh, which, which didn't happen. And even if, obviously, there are other players that can do that, that can play that kind of role from um, attacking midfield to supplement the front men, we haven't had a, such a like-for-like replacement. But... The, the the other aspect, it, it, you know, t- t- sorry, just to limit this answer in terms of the parameters of the question with regards to his departure, the other key aspect in this, I think, is Jurgen Klopp and his vision of how he sees his club, his squad, his team, his Liverpool. Every, everyone is, it's all in, you know, you know and, and it doesn't yeah. matter how, where you rank on the ability barometer, if your commitment is absolute, I, I, I think that, that, that counts for a hell of a lot in Klopp's book. 
Now, I think Klopp's a pragmatist as well. And I think if the, the numbers made sense, the finances made sense, I think he would make himself consider it. But I do think whoever's trying to broker this deal has got to pull some serious rabbits out of the hat because it's not just the financial side of things, the way Coutinho left. You know, and in the middle of the season as well, when, you know, if I'm, you know, remember rightly, Christmas 6, 17, 18, Liverpool were in a good position. I don't think we brought anyone in that, that January window, and there were some fears at the time that is this going to destabilise the club? Obviously, it didn't, but that doesn't mean to say it couldn't have done. And I think Klopp's position and his measure of loyalty, I think, may well be- become one of the key factors in whether this ever gets off the ground. Mm. Connor, how about you? Would the would the way Coutinho left have any bearing on a potential return? I think you've always got to remember for a player like Coutinho going up in Brazil and looking at the Spanish leagues, he's not a Liverpool fan through and through. He's yeah. maybe not the Premier League fan through and through. He's looking at Barcelona like they are the biggest club in the world and that perhaps, well, it's played a massive part in his decision. And I think, you know, as Liverpool have moved on and, and done great thing since Coutinho left it makes it a little bit easier to swallow the fact he went and even the nature of which it did taking into account that perhaps he might not have realised quite what he had at Liverpool you can kind of forget and people do make mistakes I think the Klopp is an interesting one um, because obviously I think he, he got a great deal out of Coutinho he gets a great deal out of a lot of players and I think that would again in a, in a different aspect Klopp again would no doubt get um, an amazing amount out of Coutinho if, if he came back so again that would play a factor in, a, in another perspective as well Gorsley final word to you on this one then departure the way he left uh, a little bit I think um, I think when he left he did a huge kind of interview with the Daily Mail where one of their journalists basically followed him for, or, or you know, sat in with his family as they boarded the private jet from Merseyside to Barcelona to seal the deal and it was all very City PR stuff and it was like images images of him cheering on Liverpool as they were playing in the Merseyside derby against Everton and it was all very manufactured and um, done to kind of it was like a, an exercise in damage limitation almost yeah. to Liverpool fans who who had worshipped them for five years and then he, he was leaving them in the lurch. Um, people I think people will remember that and they'll also remember the transfer request on the on the eve of of that season just before Liverpool played Watford. Um, fans tend to not forget that that kind of thing. Um, and then there's a there's a different um, topic almost of does he walk back into the team, which I personally don't think he does. Um, he's best as a number ten. Liverpool don't currently play with one because as we as we said, they haven't actually replaced him. Um, does he get in on the left wing where he's played in the front three before? I don't think so. Ahead of Sadio Mane, so he he might have been the main man at at one point at Liverpool, but he certainly wouldn't be if he come back and that lends itself to more questions about whether Liverpool would pay the kind of money that they sold them for. Um, so there are a lot of caveats to this potential deal, I think, yeah. Mm. Next point, then, and we'll, we'll start with you again on this one, Ghost, we'll go back around the other way. His form since leaving Liverpool, so how he's played for Barca and Brazil. I know you said before, Dan, that things have hit the skids, and there certainly is an argument that is the, the Barca dreams turn into a bit of a nightmare, but he's he's won two La Liga titles, he's just won the Copa America as well. I mean... In terms of the type of player he is now, Gorsi, do you think he's diminished at all, or is he is he still as good as he was when he left Liverpool? I haven't seen him anywhere near as much, but I, I, you know, I wouldn't imagine he'd be any lesser of a player. Maybe just someone who's had his, had his confidence shot to bits by certain things. Seen him against Manchester United in, in the Champions League, and, and in the second leg he scored an incredible goal. It was just trademark Coutinho. He, he brings it down 30 yards out, just arches it into the top corner past David De Gea. And a celebration was telling that night because he put his fingers in his ears. Yeah. It was almost like a, a riposte to the fans who, who've who given him stick for, for what would have been well over a year at that point. So um, he's, he's th- he'll still be the same player, un- undoubtedly a, a great talent. Um, I think he's possibly just had his, his confidence cut to ribbons by um, a Barcelona fan base who are not the most forgiving, shall we say. Mm. Kind of the, the continuum we've seen over the last what, 18 months, I suppose, he's... 27 now he's he's at his peak arguably do you think he's still as good as he was yeah he's un- he's undoubtedly still got that talent I think that goal you know again as of course he said I haven't seen him anywhere near as much playing for Barcelona as I did for Liverpool I think that's just obviously a natural thing but that goal he scored against United was absolutely mm. sensational you just think that is the Coutinho of old that's the Coutinho we saw at Liverpool so many times and it's clearly still the player is in there but 
he always felt like at Liverpool he was that sort of player that needed that bit of confidence. A little bit like Origi, to be honest, a little bit of an arm around the shoulder. You're playing really well at the moment. And I think that's what Liverpool gave him. And I think, again, going back to it, I don't think he realised quite what he had at Liverpool, quite what the Liverpool fans gave to him, quite what Klopp and Rodgers did with him as well. Because, again, Barcelona aren't quite as forgiven in their nature. But, mm. you know, he's still won titles. He just, you know, I think he just needs to move somewhere where he's going to be loved again. And <laughs> for me, that would be Liverpool. Mm. Dan, you are right that Liverpool with a big... <clears throat> mop of hair. Yeah, it was a bit like yours at the time. It was, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shared yeah, a lot of Bradley I, Buffon. I couldn't bang them in from 30 yards, though, uh, sadly. Because you're always a big fan of his through balls, weren't you? Was oh. he was a Twitter buyer for a while. He was great. Oh, yeah. He was great. I, yeah, my, dis- my disclaimer is I'm a, I'm a big fan, as you can, as you can probably <laughs> tell. But, um, you know, he, he looks different now. He's got more kind of serious in his, in his manner and his demeanour. But is, is the same kind of talent still there <clears> for you? When you've got the kind of natural football attributes that Felipe Coutinho has, it doesn't go away the, the vagaries of form and fitness and whatever will always come and go but the, the lad's ability should only get better and more pronounced as his career goes on particularly with experience and as you say he's coming into his late 20s if he's playing in the right environment and all the kind of variables are, are in his favour he could potentially have his best years ahead of him um, <clears throat> his, his, his poor form at Barcelona isn't necessarily one of the key factors in me not being that keen on having him back because sometimes and we've seen it ourselves uh, when players have come into Liverpool and, and the, the one that always stands out in my mind is Fernando Morientes mm. who'd come in to January 2005 27-28 the real McCoy experienced proven international class player but sometimes for whatever reason it just doesn't happen the wrong player at the wrong time in the wrong environment and that that may well be the case for uh, the little magician, as, as we always used to call him, in Catalonia at the moment. Um, <clears throat> but and you know, and, and you know, I, I should stress at this point, I'm, I'm cert- not that I heard an awful lot of it, but I'm certainly not one of these that that booed him when he came back to Anfield. Yeah. I wouldn't boo him again. You know, and you know, I can think of a, numerous moments when he he had me jumping through hoops. So I, I was that pleased with, with with what he was doing for Liverpool, but. Um, I just kind of, I can't, for me, the overriding principle is Liverpool as a club and as a team have evolved beyond him. And it just feels like a retrograde step. Mm. We'll stay with you on this one, Dan. Um, the idea of players coming back, are you against that or, or OK with that in principle? Has it worked before? Ian Doyle did a piece yesterday about... It rarely works. Yeah, but well, do- Doyle did a piece, I think he looked at five, and he his conclusion that were, was there was just about more hits than misses, if you think of mm. Rush, Bellamy, Fowler, I think he said was a hit. So mm. where, where do you stand on it in principle? I think it's a, I think a lot, a lot of the time it, it, it depends on the circumstances. I mean, you know, to use Robbie Fowler as an example, I think it's you know, he's always been very clear on it himself. He didn't really want to leave Liverpool, mm. but he felt he was forced out. By the, term, by the time he came back, it was very clear... He was brought in almost kind of like for the Indian summer of his career. Rushy was a different case as well because he went at his peak to Italy. It was only there a year. I think he was probably about 26, 27 when he came back. So arguably, in a, you know, not a dissimilar situation to Casido because he's been only away from Anfield for 18 months. Um, you know, I think you have to... You can't be too dogmatic about, about principles. I do think pragmatism is a very important mm. part of football and part of life. But... Looking at the cold, hard, and if Liverpool hadn't kicked on the way we have in the last eighteen months, it's not so much a kind of dented pride about oh you walked out on us and now He's we're going back to your cap and hand. It, it, it's you know if 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 we were still kind of in the doldrums, I would have no compunction about saying mm-hmm. yeah let's get him back in, let's get us up to where we need to be. But we are where we need to be. You know the the reality is Liverpool are absolutely primed whether we bring anyone in this summer or not for another serious crack at the top prizes next season. And part of my concern is that, for my money, the, the attacking balance that we've had was good when we had Coutinho with the front three. But I think it's got better since he's left. I think other players take more responsibility, are not as reliant on giving it to Phil to get them out of dodge. Yeah. And I, one of my biggest concerns is if, if would bringing him back affect that, that mix and that balance that, that clearly has proven to be extremely effective over the last 18 months. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll come on to that and the current side in a sec, but Connor, th- that, that idea of players coming back who've, who've left previously, is would you have any issue with that in principle? I don't think so, to be honest. I think you need to take each situation on its merit, um, how each club is doing at the time. 
and obviously from a really good position, they've got a really good manager, it's really going on really good behind the scenes. I just don't see how it wouldn't work and how he wouldn't be a brilliant player again. Um, I don't think you look at past cases, I know it doesn't always work out, but I don't think past cases really have anything to do with the next situation of a player coming back to a club. Mm. And Gorsley, where, where do you stand on that? Do you think those, those precedents mean anything for Liverpool? No, I agree with Connor. It, it all, it's all circumstantial, isn't it, on each specific situation. Uh, Robbie Fowler's situation wasn't the same as Ian Rush's uh, or Craig Bellamy's. Uh, Bellamy um, been been in the way for quite a few years, hadn't he? And I think it was a bit of a shrewd one at the time from Kenny Daglish. As Dan says, Rush was only away for a year, so it was kind of like it was just like a year long loan. And Fowler was back for the uh, the autumn of of his career, and it was a bit of a pick me up for fans. So um, it all differs, and and I think with the Coutinho situation, um, I I agree with Dan in terms of he he wouldn't be coming in. To, to drag Liverpool out of the doldrums. Liverpool are exactly where they, they'd want to be. Um, if they got two more points last season, they'd be Premier League and Champions League winners. So it's difficult to, to say that Liverpool are in desperate need of a player like Coutinho, whether they need someone of his ilk for the for the squad and, and for the long season ahead, possibly. But in terms of the first 11, Liverpool aren't in, in desperate need of Coutinho or any other number 10 at the moment, are they? Well, this is a big question. We'll start with you on this one, Connor. Obviously, we've touched on it. Do they need him and would he improve this side? I don't think they need him. I think he improves any side in the world. Um, I don't necessarily think he gets straight into the starting eleven. but, I mean, if they wanted to play him there, if they would slightly have to change the formation, slightly have to change the way they play, he would no doubt be an asset. And if they don't and they want to bring him on, what an incredible player. I, I mean, I don't see how he wouldn't improve Liverpool um, in any way, shape or form. Mm. Dan, we'll go to you next on this then. Would he not I appreciate your point that you made before that you know times are different and the way the side sets up is different, but could you not see a role for him maybe on the left of the front three, advanced midfield? <clears throat> I, absolutely, I, I can see roles he, he could play, whether it's playing as part of a front three. You know, from what I can remember, that last half the season, you know, the autumn of 2017, what was it, 12 goals in 20 games? Yeah. He did seem to be playing for kind of like from a slightly deeper role and having a pretty good impact. But you know, I think we have to remember Jordan Henderson had kind of like this rebirth in the last couple of months of last season playing in this more advanced role. Obviously, Fabinho was, you know, we're eagerly anticipating his second season, but he's come in and absolutely looks the part. For my money, is the best defensive midfield as we've had since Hamano Mascherano. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Definitely, we would be a stronger squad with him in it. But the money it would cost to get this deal done, it, you know, to to me would potentially is is potentially removing resource for other areas of the squad that would need replacing. Primarily, top quality attacking cover. I still think we need more, um, a bit more cover at the back, and possibly on the flanks as well. So, you know, it. it I think the the the. One of the biggest points I'd want to underline is that it, you know, I've made my position clear. I don't particularly want him back at Anfield. But if Jurgen Klopp decides he does, I'm not going to start ripping my season ticket up yeah. and having burning Jurgen Klopp shirts or Bettina shirts outside <laughs> the car. I quite like to see that. Jurgen Klopp has more than proven his, um, his, the, the, his, the right to have the trust of Liverpool supporters put in him. But it's a talking point. It, it's what a lot of Liverpool fans are thinking and talking about this summer. And... You know, the, the lads here have all made some very strong arguments, but I, I remain to be convinced that at this moment in time, it would be in Liverpool's best interest. Mm. Gorsley, if you're in the dugout, is Coutinho getting a game for the Reds? Horses for courses, I think. I think if mm. you look at, look at the midfield three now, they're all, they're all very similar, no matter who's picked, aren't they? So, say for instance, you're picking a, a midfield three of Gini Wijnaldum, Jordan Henderson and, and Fabinho. Um, they're all workaholics, cover the ground, um, get the tackles in the blocks, keep it short and sweet, and and, and move the ball on. Um, you take one of those out, and you put Coutinho in. That's a lot more of a workload on the other two who would have a similar style. So the pool might get a bit more overrun in midfield against certain teams. Um, it's harder for the other two to to kind of cover that ground. But obviously you gain a, a top quality attacking player who can unlock the fences. So um, it it genuinely does depend on who you're playing against. Um, Liverpool tried a 4-2-3-1 at times last season, didn't he, with Jadon Chikiri stationed out on the right and Salah as a, as a striker and Firmino as the number 10. And For me, it didn't didn't really work, didn't quite click as, as well as the 4-3-3, which I think enables Salah to just 
wreak as much havoc as he can alongside Mane and Firmino. So um, it all depends on who you're playing. Now, if you were to ask me if I had the option to play Coutinho in, in the Champions League final, then I would have to weigh that one up. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not sure what, what the answer would be, if I'm honest. Um, love him as a player, but I think having him in there does seed some control in, in the midfield three. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, well, final point, we'll finish on this and I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get me scrap of paper to read these out. Coutinho's agent's comments, things he said in recent days, which I think these kind of tell a bit of a story, but I want to get you guys' take on them. So first of all, he said, it would be very difficult for Philippe to play for any of Liverpool's rivals because, because he has such a great affinity towards Liverpool. Fine. His heart and affinity is very much with Liverpool. Great. The kind of thing you'd expect an agent to say about someone when they've been linked with it, their previous club. But then, and I think these quotes were from last night, Again, speaking about Liverpool, he says, we would have to decide whether or not they feel there is now a current gap in the squad for someone like Philippe. And then perhaps reveal, most revealingly, he says, Obvious, obviously, if he were to move back, it would have to be Liverpool, talking about the Premier League here. But at the moment, I think it would be difficult and it would be up to them. Dan, what do you make of those comments? I mean, it's not quite a come and get me plea, but it seems fairly, fairly blatant. Yeah, he's putting his cards out on the table there. What, particularly those, those latter quotes, what that says to me is that it kind of touches one upon what we've said before and whether they're sharing the same concerns. If he was to come back, how much football would he play? I think Gorsty's hit Gorsty's hit the nail on the head pretty smartly there. We're kind of like it would be very much a horses for courses type scenario. There would be certain games when it's tight at home, you look at everyone's got you've got the opposition got everyone behind the ball. Absolutely you'd want Coutinho there. But away from home to a Bayern Munich or a Manchester City, are you you know would a Klopp, would the rest of the team and squad be able to trust him in that midfield to do the workload and, and the sheer, you know, the, the, Klopp's whole team is based on everyone singing from the same sh- yeah. same hymn sheet, everyone leading that press. And that to me says that there's, there's sparks out in their mind in that would he potentially, if he was to come back, would he potentially find himself in six to nine months looking endlessly elsewhere going, well, I've only played one game out of three here. Was it worth the bother? So it, it, it's clearly the situation is, is bumbling along and it may well reach ahead over the course of the summer, but it just seems like it's going to be such a tough deal to get done. I would be staggered if it happens. Mm. Connor, does that strike you as just typical agent talk or does it feel like it's a bit more substance to those type I of comments? I think specifically with the difficulties talking about, it probably is going to come down to finances and how much money Barcelona are going to want for him and how you know Liverpool are just not going to be prepared to spend £100 million on Coutinho or anywhere probably near that and that is you know, going to be the be all and end all of it because that is what football transfers are all about aren't they they're all about the money and that, that is exactly it and, but to add you know, just that Gorsi's and Dan's point on totally you would play him in certain games and not others but then you know, when you, if you are away from home against Bayern Munich if you are away from home against City is he not an option then you could bring on for 20 minutes if you need somebody at the same time it's just mm. the other side of the coin isn't mm. it but yeah interesting comments nonetheless Mm-hmm. Gorsty, lastly then, what, what did you make of those shouts? Is he trying to cut his favour a little bit? Saying um, mm. Coutinho, he wouldn't go to anywhere else. In fact, there's not, no one else wants him really at the moment. <laughs> he seems to be, Kia's eruption as agent, seems to be trying to put him in the shot window, despite no one really walking past that window. Um, there's no suggestion Liverpool are ready to, to spend big on him. United have been tentatively linked. Chelsea can't buy anyone, City don't need them, and Arsenal probably couldn't afford them and he wouldn't want to go. So um, I, th- I think it might be just a case of flattering his eyelashes at Liverpool and keeping his fingers crossed for a move. Uh, whether that's enough to tempt Liverpool to the table, I'm not sure, because this complex deal that they struck 18 months ago um, means that Liverpool are probably owed X amount and Y amount. And, it's it's a as Dan says it's going to be a complicated deal to to pull off if uh, Liverpool decide that it's one that they want to at least try and get done. Mm. Right then, well, I think we'll leave it there. Um, can't say we necessarily answered the Coutinho question, but I think Dan's doubt, Connor's certainty, Gorsty's asterisks pretty much <laughs> sums up all the positions that that the fan base are you know reflecting divided on this one. Um, so yeah, that that'll be us for today. And no doubt we'll be discussing Coutinho again on the Blood Red Pod in the very near future. Thank you very much. <laughs>